So welcome to this recorded webinar on using the Grade Predictor Calculator. I'm Alison Whittle, the Post-16 Technical Advisor at City and Guilds, and I'm joined today by my colleague Rhys Brannell from the Moderation Support Team, who's also the architect for this calculator. In this short instructional presentation, we will be bringing the narrative that accompanies the grading calculator to life and showing some online examples of ways to use the Grading Predictor Calculator when setting targets for your learners or when supporting your learners with their UCAS submissions. In the webinar, we will be looking at an overview and the purpose of the Grading Prediction Calculator, an explanation of how to use the calculator for the 120, 360, 450, and 540 guided learning hours size of qualifications. We'll be showing examples of how to predict the second year of a two year qualification using the learners marks they obtained from year one. Reese will be demonstrating some different scenarios and how to use the simplified calculator. We'll then complete with how to use the calculator for predicting UCAS points for university offers. I'm just going to hand you over to Rhys, who's going to now give you an overview of the grading prediction calculator. So the main calculators on this spreadsheet will calculate a predicted qualification grade based upon marks and grade boundaries that can be entered by the user of the spreadsheet. There is a simplified calculator page within the spreadsheet, which will still calculate a predicted qualification grade. However, on this page, instead of entering marks and grade boundaries, the user will select estimated grades for each assessment component from a drop down box. The purpose of these calculators is to help the user predict what grade a candidate may achieve at the end of their course based on the projected performance on each assessment component. It can also be used to see how different marks awarded on a particular assessment component can affect the overall grade of the qualification. All calculated predicted grades that carry UCAS points will have those UCAS points displayed. However, a link to the UCAS points calculator is on the UCAS website is included if required. Oh, thank you, Reese. So this next slide, we're going to be looking at using the calculator with different sizes of qualifications. You will see on the title tab a list of qualification sizes on the left hand side. The formulas that sit behind the calculator will automatically calculate the marks and UCAS points that you input for level three qualifications. As it is only level three qualifications that carry UCAS points. The 120 guided learning hour qualification on the calculator is a level two technical award designed for 14 to 16 year olds. Um, the reason this has been included in the calculator is centres delivering the technical awards need to predict learners' outcomes at key stage four. That's in line with GCSEs for performance eight measures. So I'm going to click on the link, which will take us directly to the calculator. This takes its time to load up, so please bear with us. So for this example, I'm going to go straight to the 540. I'm going to look on the top tab here. So I'm going to use this 540 guided learning hour qualification to demonstrate. So you can use the pass and distinction grade boundaries from the last year of a qualification as a guide to this year's boundaries, as these will not be made available until the awarding process has been completed after the exam series. Last year's grade boundaries are available in the qualification report, which is found in the additional documents on the qualification pages. Please do be aware that the grade boundaries may alter each year. So you may want to allow for this when you are inputting your marks. So for this 540 example, I'm going to be using the grade boundaries from the 2018 exam series for a health and social care qualification. Um, the, the sort of information I've taken was from the actual exam report and the past boundary 
for the theory exam was set was 24 out of 60. The distinction boundary was 41 out of 60. If I click off that, you can see that the merit grade has been automatically calculated. Uh, this is midway between the pass and distinction grade boundaries, so you don't need to input this. For the synoptic assessment, the pass boundary was 25 out of 60, and the distinction boundary was set at 43 out of 60. Now, the predicted grade outcome will be based on the marks that you input. Please be aware again that it is a guide and a prediction only, and this will be dependent on the awarding process, as, as we said before. So the, for the purpose of this demonstration, we will make an assumption that the learner will achieve 31 marks out of 60 in the theory exam. And they've done a little better in the synoptic, and we're putting them at scoring the possible 42 out of 60. So this is showing an overall grade of a merit. And for the 540, carries 48 UCAS points for the level three qualification. For the next slide, we're going to be demonstrating how you can use the marks that you obtained in the 540 and how you can use them to predict grades for the two-year qualification for the 1080. So as you have the learner's actual marks from year one, you can input those marks for both the theory and synoptic assessments and input the grade boundaries as we explained in the last slide. So we're just going to load the calculator for the 1080 qualification and input those marks again. So for this time, I'm, I'm clicking on the 1080. We're going to input exactly what we did last time. So it's 24 marks for the pass for the theory exam. And the distinction boundary, as we said on the last slide, was 41. We know the learner achieved 31 last year. For the synoptic, we know that the pass boundary was set at 25 out of 60. This is just correcting me there, thank you. 25 out of 60. And the distinction boundary was set at 43 out of a possible 60. And we also know that the learner achieved 42 overall for that. It will show that the learner achieved a pass for the theory, if you look at the boundaries, because it wasn't quite as high as a merit boundary, and they would have achieved a merit in the synoptic. The qualification grade is showing as incomplete because it is only year one of a two-year qualification. So you can then input your learner's predicted marks for this year, and that will give you an overall predicted grade. Again, please be aware that the same applies and the grade boundaries may alter each year. So for this example, I'm going to allow for the grade boundaries to be raised slightly. And I'm going to input for the theory exam a pass boundary of 25 out of 60. And a distinction boundary of 42 out of 60 for the theory exam. For the synoptic, we're going to put a pass boundary of 26 out of 60 and raise slightly the distinction boundary to 44 out of 60. So let's assume that the learner in the second year will achieve 34 marks in the theory exam. And let's assume that the learner will achieve 45 marks in the synoptic assessment. If we click on this, it will calculate that the learner has achieved a merit-merit distinction. And that comes out as DDM, and that carries for level three 112 points overall. Now for the next slide, Luis is gonna take you through some different scenarios, and again, how to use the grading calculator. I'm gonna click off and hand it over to my colleague.
So one potential scenario where the spreadsheet would be used for a one year 540 GLH course is where the student has already achieved a grade in the spring exam series. And by entering different marks for the synoptic, the spreadsheet will tell us what effect this will have on the overall grade. So I'm going to put an example grade boundary in for both theory and synoptic. And I'm going to give the student 41 marks on the theory, which gives them a merit on that unit. In order for the student to get a distinction overall, they will need to achieve 45 marks on the synoptic. Achieving 44 marks would give them a merit overall and on the synoptic. This student could actually achieve as little as 28 marks on the synoptic, which would only give them a pass, but they would still achieve a merit overall. This is because the synoptic is worth 60% of the overall grade as opposed to the theory, which is only worth 40%. This highlights the importance of the student's performance in the synoptic. Let's assume the student does only achieve 28 marks on the synoptic and steps up onto a two-year course the following year. We can now use these grade boundaries and marks from the first year on the 1080 GLH calculator. So I'm going to put the same grade boundaries in from the first year and the same marks as well. For the grade boundaries of the second year assessment components, it's advised to add a small increase on the previous year's boundaries to allow for any potential changes in awarding from year to year. In this scenario, I've added 10% to each of the boundaries as it is unlikely to be ever higher than that. If we assume the student achieves no worse and no better than last year in the theory exam, the spreadsheet tells us that the student would achieve a merit on the theory exam again. And same for the synoptic, if they achieve 28, they will achieve a pass again. This gives an overall grade of pass merit merit, which has 80 UCAS points. We can change the mark achieve to see what the student would need to achieve in order to meet a target of merit, merit, merit. In this scenario, the student will need to achieve 34 marks on the synoptic. Merit, merit, merit. It would still be a pass for the synoptic, but increases the overall grade. If we keep the synoptic at 28 marks, for example, the student would then need to achieve a total of 48 marks on the theory exam instead to get the merit, merit, merit. This means achieving a distinction on that unit. This again de demonstrates the importance of the synoptic with it counting for 60% of the overall grade as opposed to the theory which counts for 40%. Um, I'm now going to take you through the simplified calculator. Um, on the simplified calculator page, there is a lot less data that needs to be entered. There is no need to enter marks or grade boundaries. However, the consequence of this is that the simplified calculators give less accurate calculations. Instead of entering marks and grade boundaries on this page, you can simply select a rough grade for each assessment component from the drop down box provided. Once a rough grade has been selected for each assessment component, an overall predicted grade will be displayed along with the UCAS points where applicable. That's great. Thank you very much, Lisa. I'm just going to finish off now with the, the final slide, um, which is all about UCAS points and higher education applications. It's really important uh, when submitting your predicted grades to UCAS that you do use the actual qualification that your learners will be completing with. And it's only the largest size qualifications, such as the 720 guided learning hours and the 1080 guided learning hours, that have the granularity of grading that universities will require to make their offers. Now, universities will accept predicted grades based on your previous year's results. 
So you can use the UCAS points identified on the calculator for year two of the qualification, as they will be based on the learner's predicted grades at the end of the two years. Now, this is where it's really useful that if a learner needs to achieve certain grades or UCAS points to meet a university's offer, you can then work with the learner and use the calculator to show them what marks they're going to need to achieve in the theory and synoptic to actually meet their university offer. Now, on the bottom here, you can see this is going to be a link to the actual UCAS tariff calculator, which is inbuilt into this prediction calculator. The reason I want to take you through this is to show you the qualifications as they look on the actual UCAS website. Now, it's, it's a drop down menu, so I'm just going to demonstrate that. And I do need to actually see, you can see there's two here. There's a 1080 first awarded in 2019, which shows the granularity of grading, as it's only from September this year that has the granularity. The old version is this one here. So I'm going to be clicking on this, and I'm going to put the learner's grades that we got in before that we, we, we met, which was DDM overall. Uh, the subject is optional because all level three qualifications of the same size have the same UCAS points allocated to them. And you'll see the grades and points that are awarded here match the grades of the points, the UCAS points that are on our calculator. So I'm just going to fi finally show back to our final slide here. And it's really just a thank you for listening. Um, and to say, if you have any questions or would like any further support, please email the moderation support at cityandguild.com and you'll see there is a contact number there. So thank you for listening and uh, we do hope you found this useful.